Hello, my sewing friends. This is Friday Sews. Woohoo! I'm Jen, and this is my sewing room where it's Friday for Friday Sews, where we talk about sewing in life, and I'm just going to tell you all of the things. So, let me tell you what I've been working on this week. First of all, we finished up our collab um, with the Fab Five. We had a theme of animal prints and that came out on Tuesday. So I will link that video up here. I will also link everybody's videos in the description box below because it was kind of fun to see how we all came out. Here's what I did. It's a Vogue pattern. I'll, you know, go to the video if you want to know more about it. It was a huge success. And then I've been buried under all of this. <laughs> let me, let me explain. My daughter Jenna thinks that no mom more is more and she's looking for a wedding gown and she's got some ideas about what she wants and so one of the things she wants to do is get a rainbow effect underneath a tulle skirt of a dress that she likes. She's already picked it out, she loves it, but she wants some kind of tweaks. So we got some iridescent fabric, two yards of each one and I kind of sewed all the ends together and made a bit of a skirt. Um, I put a casing at the top and just did a drawstring and that's what you see right there. And so this is organza um, and I'm going to send this to her and we're going to see how it looks under the skirt of the dress, which is in Ohio, which she it's a long story, but she's going to go out there and try this on under that the skirt of that wedding gown. We'll see. It's pretty flashy. It's kind of cool though, you know? So that was under my uh, sewing machine lately. And then I was at Hobby Lobby and I noticed, I was there to get some other fabric and I noticed this, which is I think a lame. It's polyester lame. Oh God, look at that. And I got uh, blue. I got a uh, pink. I got a green, actually this is more like a, no it's blue, a green and a purple. And so I have all of them sewn together, you can't even see. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is make another skirt out of all of this. I don't know if you can even see this, there we go. And I want her to try that under the tool as well, just to see if she likes the effect better. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> and then because I was at Hobby Lobby and this was shiny and pretty and holographic and sparkly, I got it too, just another two yards. And then I've been working with some uh, just plain tool. This is like a uh, fine mesh. And the skirt of the dress she wants to buy is made out of this. And so she also wants that to be kind of sparkly. No of more, she more does. is more. So I've been spray painting and mod podging, glitter paint, and oh, I'm still working on that. So I don't know. that's a whole lot of tool that hopefully I will be able to do something with. If you have any ideas about that, let me know because I'm starting to go, I don't know what about this. I don't know. We'll, we'll go from there. So that uh, was under my machine and still is under my machine. My machine is, I took it in today to be serviced. That is my trusty Fast 7570. And oh my gosh, I love this machine so much. It is so faithful. So it's like a trusty steed, you know? So, okay, uh, moving on, uh, one of, other thing I did was take this worthless, cheap Walmart uh, bundle of very bad fabric. I mean, it's a knit, but like, what green line? There's a green line, ugh. But you know what, I had a, a nightgown that I've probably had for, I don't know, <laughs> a long time, probably at least 10 years, if not longer than that. And it hit me at my knees and I like my nightgowns to go to the floor. And so I stuck some of this on the bottom and you know what? Worked like a charm. So did that. On the table right now is uh, the muslin that I'm working on to combine McCall's 3473 and Simplicity 8057. These are from 1987 and uh, what is this one from? 1992. 
So sleeve dress. I like this dress. I would really like to make just the dress, but I want that sleeve and it fits nicely on there. So I got it out, fiddled around with it. I thought, okay, I need to go back in and uh, mark with a pen the notches and what goes to what, and then pay attention to the order of operations as described in the blouse with the sleeve because of the way it's put together. I don't know, I had it wrong, whatever I did. And then I've got this uh, Laura Ashley dress that I wanted to make a long time ago, like, you know, 30, 40 years ago, 30, probably 30 years ago. And I never did, and I have this uh, fabric that's a sheet. It's like two or three sheets actually. And it's called Bramble. So it's a Laura Ashley fabric. Yeah, for the dress. So I'm using these sheets. And the trouble here is that this is the back of one of them. You see how faded that is, the side, as compared to the center back? Yes, well, that's a problem. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna solve it. I do have the bodice done over here. So I'm kind of thinking, <sighs> This may end up being just a working muslin, and then I'll use some other fabric to do it if it works. I don't know. We'll see. So I have that on my table, and i that's about as far as I got. I went to Salvation Army this week, and I got some things. I got a couple of quilt books. This is Better Homes and Gardens Complete Guide to Quilting, and then also Sew, Slice, Spin, and Sash. This one is by Teresa Ward. This is a compilation of a lot of authors and an editor. And so I don't know when I'm ever gonna use these, but I thought, you know, this kind of a quilt is something I really like. And I'm kind of on a batik binge right now. <laughs> All of the fabrics I've been buying are batiks. So uh, yeah, I was just thinking, you know, those might be good to have for reference. It's always good to have a really solid library of sewing books. And then I also found some cool things. Okay, this is really interesting. This is something called, I had to write it all down. It's called a conga, which is a printed cotton, one and a half meters by one meter, often with a border on four sides. They are sold in pairs. It's called a pindo in Swahili. And it comes from Madagascar. Wow. All the way from Madagascar to Florida. How did that happen? This, wait a minute, this is what it looks like. So these are sold in pairs usually, and um, African women in Madagascar use them to make, you know, clothing. And of course, you know, the reason it caught my eye was this border. I thought, oh my gosh, I could cut that off and put it on the bottom of a sundress and it would be stunning. I didn't know what this, these printed words were. So I looked them up and uh, I found that the fabric was made by a company called Group Sokota in Madagascar. And the closest translation I could get to what's printed on that is blessings are powerful. Google Translate couldn't give me anything. Most of the things couldn't give me anything. And I don't know, let me show it to you again. And maybe you know what this means. But I was so impressed that I got this incredible, beautiful panel. There we go. From Madagascar. How cool is that? Oh, fabulous. Then I picked up about almost six yards of this, which I thought was uh, rayon. Feels like rayon, but it's not. It's tinsel. And I found that out because I looked at the selvage and I looked up the company. This is a print from 1993 and the company is Quadtex. So I didn't know about this, very 1993 colors, but you know what, I don't care. I had to text the Fab Five and say, what do you guys think, should I get this? And uh, they said, yes, Adam from Adam So said, oh, if you cut that on the diagonal, that would be beautiful. He does a lot of quilting, so I trust his opinion. I found sheets. This is a ticking stripe, which is normally an old fabric. It's usually denim and it's woven. It's a like 
the color is woven into it rather than printed. Well, this is just a sheet. It's a full uh, fitted sheet and I've cut off the elastic and it's just printed. It's not woven, but it's a nice weight cotton. And I thought this would make a cute camp shirt or a blouse or a little gathered skirt just any number of things, you know? It's not a heavy enough cotton, I don't think, for pants. Although, you never know. I mean, people make pants off all kinds of stuff now. So that was a find, and this was really a find. This is a vintage sheet, and I think it reads 1970. But I got the, I think it's a full flat and the pillowcases. So that's gonna make something really nice. Just something fun, you know? So 100% cotton, once again. So that's everything I got at Salvation Army. It was kind of a good haul, I think, yeah. Let's move on to your comments from last week. We talked about formal wear and we also talked about hats. I was so entertained by all of your uh, comments about hats. A lot of you said, well, actually 33 of you said that you are hat fans. And then 11 either said they don't like hats or they can't wear them because their head isn't right for them or they just don't like them or something like that. So let me start in with Karen Nybeck, who I mentioned last week about how her daughter she, or her granddaughter, she says, is a princess. So she said, my husband heard my name and ran into the room saying, was that your name? She said, I beamed and said, yes, he had to watch a few more times. It's so easy to make this man happy. Thank you. My pleasure. And then she said, hats, any kind, anytime, anywhere, love hats, not enough reasons to wear them. She lives in Arizona. So there is a sun factor going on, but she loves Another hat fan. Robin Sozon says, I belong to a group called the Red Hat Society. It's worldwide, so my red hat collection is big. I have heard of that uh, society, but when I heard of it, I was younger, and I always thought it was a bunch of old ladies. I'm an old lady now. I could, you know, easily be a part of the Red Hat Society. Honestly, I don't know if there is an age limit on that. I don't know, but how cool is it that she's got a whole collection of red hats? Diane Montabon says, I love the fascinators, but for me, I don't wear hats. I'm Catholic and as, and as a child, we had to wear a hat in church. I wore a chapel veil or paper if I forgot my hat. <laughs> Anything will work. She says, thanks for asking the question because I hadn't thought about my chapel veil in years. What a wonderful memory. I am so glad that the whole discussion sparked that for you. Laura Hobbs got straight to the point. No head for hats. Hats are not for her. Robin Cook says, I do like hats, but I don't look good in them. Okay, right here, I just have to stop and say, uh, sometimes it's not that you don't look good in a hat. It's that you haven't found the right hat the right shape and color and size to flatter you. I have a feeling that there's a hat for everyone, but you have to come upon the one that you feel conf confident in and that you um, love. Linda Ford says, love, love, love hats. I have a good collection of them and I usually wear one to church every Sunday. I am, of course, in the minority as only one or two other ladies sometimes wear them, but I don't care. I'm sometimes referred to as the hat lady. When I travel by air, I wear it onto the plane, remove it after takeoff, and replace it when deplaning. Hats of all types are so feminine. Does she not sound fabulous? I would love to see her walking by rocking one of those hats. I think that is fantastic. Yes. Go, Linda. Sue K says, I love hats. I just look dorky in them. My kids laugh when I try them on. My kids are jerks. Yeah, well, mine are too sometimes. <laughs> and you know what? Here's my advice. If you think you look good in the hat, doesn't matter what your kids say. Doesn't matter what anybody says. If you like the hat and you like it on your head, you like what you see in the mirror, you're good. 
Susan Stewart says, no on the hats. Only ball caps when it rains. My head is too big and in too many years in uniform. I still catch myself checking that the brim is parallel and the right depth when I put on a ball cap. Put your index and your middle finger in your forehead between your eyebrows and your fingers should touch the brim. Did you know that? This is why I love you guys. I had no idea that was how you wore a ball cap properly. Hmm. Good advice. Thank you, Susan. With regard to formal wear, Agata from In Agata's Cottage. She is a YouTuber and she does Friday sews and I will link her channel in the description box. She says, I made my daughter's communion dress using my wedding dress. I have put some pictures in my video if you would like to see. Yes, I would very much like to see. And if I can find her video, I will link it up here in the cards. Isn't that great? Making something precious for her daughter that can be passed down out of her wedding gown. Ah. Dillis Moore says, I not only made my wedding gown, I designed it. No one will ever have one like it. So true. And wow, <laughs> that is fantastic. Because I'm assuming what you did was sit down and sketch it out and then make it come to life. That is an amazing skill. It's an amazing talent. Michelle Starr says, by the way, did you know your spit will remove your blood? You may remember that last week I talked about a skirt where I put on an elastic uh, band at the top and I pricked myself and bled on it. Well, I also bled on the dress that I made for the collab um, on that we revealed on Tuesday because I was pinning up the, the hemline around my waist and I nicked myself with the pins and I went to you know, iron out the friction pen marks. And I thought, what the hell? I cannot believe I just did that. I spit on those, those stains, those blood stains. I couldn't believe it. It took them right out. She says, your spit will not remove anyone else's blood. It will remove your blood, but it won't remove anybody else's. Our bodies are amazing. No kidding. I really, I feel like, wow. I, it's so fun to share this kind of stuff with you. And I would never know that if not for you guys. Sandy Freese uh, says, my husband calls my sewing room the sweatshop. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I feel your pain because this is the warmest room in the house. And with the overhead lights and the sun coming in in the morning, I mean, it's like, it's definitely a sweatshop. So I get it. Likewise. And the best comment of all of the comments last week was from Jamie Vernon, who says, I love the look of a hat. So pretty and dressy. However, as a short woman wearing a wide brim hat, I bear a striking resemblance to a mushroom. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jamie. I love to laugh. And that was hilarious. In fact, I told her, I said, that's going in the comments this week. So that was all of your comments. For this week, the question uh, has to do with things that have nothing to do with sewing, really. Man, I'll tell you what, I write these questions, so I am reaching. I have run out of them. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments because I need some help. So the question for this week is this. First of all, it's National Blueberry Cheesecake Day here in the U.S. Did you know that? Do you even care? I love blueberries. I, I will eat them any way possible. It is also National Road Trip Day. So here's the question. Do you make new clothes when you're gonna go on a trip? Like, do you, do you want new things to take with you? Do you go to a lot of trouble to do that ahead of time? I went on a trip uh, a couple of months ago and I made a bunch of stuff to take with me because, well, the weather was gonna be different from where I live. So I needed things that were going to be comfortable but warm. And that was kind of fun. I mean, I almost did an entire capsule wardrobe, a very small one, but I kind of did that. It was kind of fun. And I'm coming up on another trip in June. It's going to be a road trip. And uh, I'm going to make some new things for that too. I just think that's fun. It's like, it's a good reason to get new clothes, you know, except that you're making them and not 
not uh, getting them. So have you made clothes to do that on a trip in the past? Or are you going on a trip, a road trip in the future, like this summer or this winter, if you live down under? Yeah, let's talk about that in comments. And that will do it for Friday Sews this week. As always, click on the hashtag to find a bunch of new people that you will love watching who do Friday Sews. All you have to do is click on the hashtag. It will bring up the search engine thing and show you all kinds of people to go watch. Do filter your results though by upload date and you'll get the newest ones. So that, and uh, if you would like to see a, an extensive list, playlist of all my Friday Sews, then check right over here. I will leave you with uh, my prayer card, which is the joy of the Lord is your strength. That is from Nehemiah 8.10 in the Old Testament. I totally agree. Joy, there is strength in joy, and it will absolutely mow down whatever thing that is making you afraid. Your joy will do that. The joy of the Lord will do that. Okay, I will leave you with that. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great Memorial Day weekend if you're here in the U.S. And a great weekend in general if you're anywhere else. <laughs>